Today I want to talk about my main camera, which is the Fujifilm X-T30. I've had it for two years now, so I think I got a pretty good understanding of how good it is and the pros and cons. So, uh, let's dive into it. Welcome to the channel. Hola Duro, how you doing? Today I want to talk about my main camera, you know, the daily driver, the Fujifilm X-T30. I've had it for two years now, I've been rocking it ever since. You know, from finding snapshots to street photography, some architectural, uh, even corporate videos. And now, this. And let me tell you, it's been great. Now, I want to share with you some of the pros and cons I've encountered on these uh, two years. So let's dive into them. Let's start with the pros. Things that I love about the camera. Number one, the color and film simulation. I know, yet another Fuji video talking about color, but what I think it's missing from most videos I've seen, or articles I've read, it's uh, what makes them so special. Each brand will give you their own natural flavor. But instead of Fuji, what I think will give you is color based around your memory. You know, the color as you remember it, as you think it was. Actually, how it works. And now, when you pair that with the film simulations, you got a whole nother pattern. If you compare what every other camera brand does, they will probably give you some variations in a the theme. More or less contrast, more or less saturation, but overall, the tones, the colors, they stay mostly the same. In case of Fujifilm, you will get wildly different colors based around your film simulation. Next up, image quality. It's not only about how sharp the images are, because that depends also on the lens. It's more about uh, the resolving power, you know, the, how the texture go, the gradation on the colors, uh, the noise levels, the pleasing noise levels. I think the image overall just looks great. Let's move on to number three, the size. I love the size of the camera. It's small but not that small it feels great on the hands it's portable it's light you pair down with a small lens and you get a really good travel around and walk around the camera so it's it's a great size now i must admit at first i wanted it to three yes the bigger bulkier beefier brother but it turns out this one's been great let's get to point number four which is the styling the look and feel of the camera you may be wondering, is that really important? Does that really make a difference? Does it make it a better camera? No, but if you like how it looks, it will probably... If you like how it looks... What's wrong with those guys? Compare that with a car. If you like the look of your car, you want to drive it. If you like the look of your guitar, you just want to grab it and play it. The same happens with the camera. If you like the style, you will get drawn to it. Number five, the physical controls. Yes, those top dials. <laughs> I love them, but it's not only the dials. It's it's the whole thing. It's the front wheel, it's the back wheel, it's back buttons, touch screen, everything. The amount of customization you can do with the camera, from the buttons to the menus, it's just stunning. You can really make it your camera. Just there. I think I got it the first time. Number six, the tilt screen. I know it's not popular on YouTube where you want a flip screen, but stay with me. For photography, I think the tilt screen works way better. Number seven, it's a lot of little things. USB-C chart, simple menus, Q menu, compass raw, focus eight, focus in distance, I love that thing. Number eight, it's more like a, like a bonus point, the kit lens. That Fujinon 18 to 55, it's great. It's sharp, it's fast, it's reliable. It's a really good lens. It's not your typical kit lens. Now let's get to the downside, the cons. The, I think you should fix this. Number one, the battery life. Yes, the battery life just flat out sucks. <laughs> Taking pictures is not that bad because I tend to just uh, switch it off, but uh, for video, it's you're gonna need a you can number two the video recording i've never hit it uh, about 10 minutes in 4k i think it's uh, 
15 on HD, but just knowing it's there, <laughs> it just, ah man. Number three, the ports. The mic jack, it's 2.5 if you need an adapter, and I hate that. Second, they're too cramped together. You can't really plug the HDMI and the USB-C for power at the same time, unless you MacGyver that you're way in. Number four, the autofocus. Yeah, for stills, it may work, but continuous and for video, it's not as reliable as, say, Canon or Sony. Number five, no flip screen. <laughs> I know, I just say I love the, the screen, the tilt screen, but for photography, I mean, for video, now that I'm just trying to do this, I miss it. I really wish I had one. Just to check on exposure, to check on the framing, Yes, for video work, for, for this kind of video work, you need, you really need that play the screen. Closing thoughts. Is it worth it? Is it still worth it? As of 2021 or 2022? Yes and no. Would I get it again? Yes and no. <laughs> yes, I'd still buy it. But this time around, I'd buy the Mark II because that one has uh, more transformations. It, it doesn't have the same video recording limits and it's uh, it's got a better autofocus and there there are some um, firmware updates to the, to the video so yeah I would get the Mark II totally but no because having this actually I'd go for either the new generation or maybe the bigger brothers so yeah, that's uh, well. That, that's my review. I, I I don't have anything else to say. I wish you found this uh, entertaining or at least useful. So I guess I'll just uh, yeah. See you in the next one. Bye.